So my sweet brother here asked, why is the wedding not mentioned in Luke looking for the bride? Love you, brother. Thank you. So my, my sweet brother reached out to me here on this channel and on YouTube and was, was asking, how am I basically getting the, the, the references or the beliefs that we are indeed the bride? And uh, really quickly, I want to share at least two verses that I believe lead us to this fact. And now there are, I know there are several others, but these are the two that have stuck out to me uh, so far. But before I share those, I want to give a quick recaps on Matthew and on Mark's gospel. So the wedding actually is not found in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. It's actually only mentioned in John chapter 2 verses 1 through 11, and the wedding that you are referring to, sweet brother, is the wedding of Cana, where Jesus turns the water into wine. But we see no mention of a wedding, quote unquote, in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. So where do I get that idea from? And again, stepping back into Matthew and Mark really quickly, I want to share with you some things that I found in Matthew and in Mark that lead me to believe those are for their Gospels. And I'm going to be cutting it very short, so I challenge you to do the research for yourself. But first we will go here to Matthew chapter 21, verse 43, and it says, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruit thereof. When Matthew shared this, he was speaking to the children of Israel. Now when we go down to verse 46 of this same gospel, it reads this. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Now this same parable and ending message is found in Mark chapter 12 verses 1 through 12 and Luke 20 verses 9 through 19. You will not see a reference for Jesus being a prophet in those other Gospels. And now really quickly, the same parable in Luke 20, um, starting in verse 16. He shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And this is referring to the Jews. They said, God forbid. And then over in Matthew, it says that he's given the nation, or he's given the kingdom to a nation that will bring forth much fruit. He's giving it to somebody else. Here in Luke, we see that he's giving it to others. And those others are referring to us. And then here at the end in verse 19, it says that the chief priests and the scribes in the same hour sought to lay hands on him, not to pray for him, but to kill him. And they feared the people for they perceived that he had spoken the parable against him or against them. But again, in verse 46, we see that it says this in Matthew 21, but when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. So again, Matthew referring to Jesus as a prophet, just as the Jews currently do. And we also notice this in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now notice that's only mentioned in Matthew. This verse is not found anywhere else throughout the entirety of Scripture because this is meant for the Jews. Now if we notice in Mark chapter 13, Starting in verse 13, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And notice also it says something similar to that in Matthew chapter 24. But in Luke 21 verse 19 it says, In your patience possess ye your souls. It's not the same. In your patience possess ye your souls. It means relax. Yes, the time is coming to an end, child of God, but you have to be patient, right? Which patience is a virtue for me, that's for sure. But Mark is saying endure until the end. 
as does Matthew says, endure until the end. And also notice at the end of Mark here in, th uh, in chapter 13, it says for them to watch four times. It speaks of the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, which means they will be here during the seven-year uh, tribulation. And it also mean, uh, says this in verse 36 of 13 in Mark, at least coming suddenly he finds you sleeping, which means not prepared. So again, we see just in Mark 13 alone, there's a lot of references here to those being this, this being the lukewarm church and them being left behind. Matthew, of course, also refers to the abomination of desolation and so on, so they will be here. But Luke never references the abomination of desolation, so we know for a fact we will not be here during that time. Really quickly, now we're on to the bride. Luke chapter 4, I'm going to read two verses to you in 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Where is this found in Scripture? This is found in Isaiah chapter 61. Let's go there now. So now, Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, and so on. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Now skip down to verse 6, but ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Now we'll go up here to verse 10 in Isaiah 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed, clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robes of righteousness. And as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments. And as a bride ordaineth herself with her jewels. So we see a reference here of a bride and the bridegroom. And we also understand that, yes, Matthew, Mark, and Luke is absolutely 100% in order. That's a fact, and we can get into that at a later date. However, the book of Revelations, after at least chapter 4, is not in order. And just one reference of proof of that, Revelation 12 sign happened in 2017. If that was the rapture, we're way past the tribulation point now. Now we'll go to Revelations 18.23, and we understand that Revelations is not in order, but the other Gospels are, like I stated earlier. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by the sorceries were all the nations deceived, and so on. Now, if we go back to Luke, it doesn't refer to the abomination of desolation. It does speak of the second coming of Jesus. But after that verse, it states, But before all these things take place, look up and lift up your head. For your redemption draws nigh. And then verse 36, Pray that you are counted worthy to escape all these things. He is calling out to the bride here. Again, those are just two references, one of them actual in the scriptures. The other one you had to dig for. But that's the purpose of the gospel to dig and seek these things out. And I'm sure there's more. These are the only two that I felt were necessary for this time. I love you and I pray this helps you.